Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we're going to be sampling a couple different lighter beers. And uh, by light, I mean color. I certainly don't mean flavor. Uh, these, again, are both sourced from Tavour. Uh, so we're going to be starting with the brewer we've had a few beers from prior. Uh, this is Fremont Brewing based out of Seattle, Washington. This is their Field to Ferment. It is a fresh hop pale ale clocking in at 6% ABV. Uh, this one has been brewed with Centennial and Simcoe hops, and uh, fresh hop in, in the style name is actually important because in order for a beer to be able to be called fresh hop, it has to go from the hops being picked from the vine to in to the boil, making the beer within 48 hours. Uh, that distinction is important because it literally does actually mean something. So uh, that is what happened with this, and uh, Fremont, being in Seattle, they are in the, mi the midst of the biggest hot belt of the United States. So uh, Lord knows they are spoiled for choice. Um, moving on to beer number two. This is going to be from a brewer I've never had any prior. This is Allagash Brewing based out of Portland, Maine. This is a true penny and it's a, what they term a Belgian style pills. This one a little bit lower ABV at 5.5% ABV. So one pale ale, uh, one pilsner, both lighter beers, but both should be packed full of flavor, and I cannot wait to jump in. So we're going to do exactly that. Starting with Fremont Brewing's Field to Ferment, Fresh Hop Pale Ale, clocking in at 6% ABV. Okay, so jumping right in with the first beer of today's lighter beer review. We have got Fremont Brewing's Field to Ferment. This is the Fresh Hop Pale Ale, clocking in at 6% ABV, they are based out of Seattle, Washington. Now this specific fresh hop pale ale is packed with a blend of Centennial and Simcoe hops, and they are two very high alpha acid content hops. So I do expect this beer to be full of flavor, it may even be quite a bit hoppier than your average pale ale, really depends on their process, how many they put in. But we do know it should taste quite fresh as they got those hops straight from the vine into the beer within 48 hours, hence why they are able and allowed to call it fresh hop. That is the, the distinction. That is the distinction. You have 48 hours, otherwise if you miss that mark, you cannot call it fresh hop. And that's true for fresh hop IPAs, et cetera, et cetera. But this is a pale ale. So we've had a few beers from Fremont. All of them uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed and uh, I can't wait to get jumping into this one. First thing first, in terms of label art, it's, uh, you know, very hop dominated. It's got a big old uh, hop sitting there over some brewing equipment and a nice hop vine kind of motif running around and a nice green can. So it's getting me in the mood for these fresh hops. So let's just get this cracked, poured right in the glass. We're gonna do this gently. That's right, gently does it, and poured right in. Ooh, that's a lovely looking pale ale. Absolutely, that looks great. And we gave it a good chance to form a good head. Excellent, excellent. Waste not, want not. Oh, I can smell this from here. This smells so hoppy. All right, visually, this is a beautiful beer. There is a slight bit of occlusion to it. Indeed, it almost looks like a little cloud floating in there, some fine hop particulates. I don't mind that at all. And the color is lovely. It's a light uh, yellow, maybe just the slightish tinge of orange. But overall, I would say it's a very bright light yellow. It formed a fantastic head. Uh, looks very lush and creamy. So let's give this a sniff. Oh, that smells so good. I could smell it from over there. Once you get up over it, it's insane. This smells so good. Smells like a combination of a kind of floral hop aromas and a little bit of pine, the slightest hint of citrus. That's the main um, aromas that are coming out of this, which with a blend of Centennial and Simcoe, I'm not surprised by that. Um, they are big hops. They impart a big flavor and big aroma, and that's absolutely hitting the head what they're kind of known to smell like. So it smells great. It looks great. The head's a little thicker than I'd normally dive in, but I don't want to rough it up. So we're just going to uh, risk a mess in the beard. Let's jump right in. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, 
that is so hop forward. Wow, that's a very, very big pale ale. Very, very big pale ale. The first thing you notice when you get it in your mouth is just how hop present it is. The hop flavors really come through. They are intense. And I can tell you, after you swallow, the kick of bitters that comes behind is no joke either. This is far more bitter than your average pale ale. And indeed, this is far more bitter than many, many, many IPAs that I've had. And this could put them to absolute shame. Centennial and Senco, fresh into the beer uh, with those high alphas. I mean, I'm telling you, that's just a recipe for a big hop forward beer. And for pale ale, this is just next level. It is next level. Okay, I'm gonna jump in for body and mouthfeel and start to explore these flavors. The body is medium light. It's maybe a little lighter than I anticipated for 6%, but it's not that far off. Mouthfeel pretty much feels like a, I expected. It's uh, mostly flat-ish, but it's got uh, quite a bit of carbonation. It's very effervescent, as you can see from this lush head. But interestingly, if you do start to move it around just a little bit, what feels flat when it first gets in the mouth you can tell that there is some resistance there. I don't want to say it's thick, it's not syrupy, but there is resistance to the beer. In terms of the flavor development, it's a massive. It's just a massive burst of hops up front, just big, bold, fresh hop flavor. And it's dominant, earthy flavor, which is a, a little bit in contrast to the aroma. And you do get a nice, big twinge of pine. Centennial and Simcoe are known for imparting that and uh, it really does come through. It's, uh, they're two of kind of the quintessential West Coast IPA uh, hop varieties. And uh, it, it really works in this beer. It's big and bold and pungent, and I'm a massive fan. I'm gonna jump back in. Final thoughts on the flavor development and the finish, but I love it. It's just balanced beautifully. big burst up front. It's it's really equal parts earthy and pine and you get slight suggestions of floral and citrus um, but it's dominant dominant by earthy and pine and those two hop flavors together for my money are two of the best. They just marry together that rich earthiness of kind of the earthy flavor side of hops and then you get that resinous tar like pine that comes in and they just marry together and it just seems to intensify the hop flavor and the hop experience and this does get intense and it holds there for a good long while and they just blend and then you're just in hop, in a hop wonderland i mean it's just big bold fresh intense hop flavor and it slowly starts to dissipate in intensity but it's got a very very long finish <laughs> Very, very long for a pale ale. This is long, even if it were an actual IPA IPA, but this is huge. This beer is all about big, bold, high alpha acid content hops that were put in fresh and just making their mark on a big, bold beer. This is a big, big pale ale in terms of hop intensity and bitter intensity, and I absolutely love it. I'm gonna take my time sipping on this, come up with my scores, when we come back, we will get to the second beer of today's lighter beer review. That is Allagash Brewing's T True Penny, which is a Belgian-style Pilsner clocking in at 5.5% ABV. Okay, so jumping into the second beer of today's lighter beer review, we have got Allagash Brewing's True Penny, which is a Belgian Pilsner clocking in at 5.5% ABV. Allagash is based out of Portland, Maine. Uh, first things first, starting off with label art. This, uh, not really much to talk about here. It's just a very, very clean design. Um, but nonetheless, we're going to get this cracked. So, Belgian Pilsner. What is a Belgian Pilsner? Well, um, you know, there's no hard and fast rule. Uh, this one specifically was brewed with Belgian Pilsner malts, hence the Belgian some are brewed with Belgian lager yeast, hence the Belgian, uh, but this one is really coming from the malts. So that's why they're classifying it as a Belgian. It is using Belgian Pilsner malts. Nonetheless, let's get this poured right in the glass. Oh, that's a lovely beer. That is a classic, classic Pilsner color. 
absolutely spot on. Got a nice little head formed there. Yeah, that looks great. Let's hold this up. Visually, this is classic Pilsner's uh, very, very nice light and bright yellow color. Kind of palish. You could call it straw, straw yellow. Not dissimilar to a Saison. It goes or something like that, but it has a little more depth of color. Um, very, very active in terms of carbonation. Very fine. Champagne-like bubbles. Very, very fine. Uh, did form a nice classic Pilsner head. Um, I'm not able to smell it from here, but it's a Pilsner. It's not a super pungent uh, aroma. Typically, style of beer. So let's get over and give it a sniff. Oh, that smells great. Yeah, that smells like a classic Pilsner. You get this slight fruity sense from it, um, which is very common with the Pilsner. It's a slight fruity, almost, you don't want to call it sweet, but it's a slight fruitiness to it and very grainy behind that. A Pilsner is a style that's all about just this nice clean crispness. And a lot of that comes from the grain. And this Belgian Pilsner malt, I imagine, is going to be excellent. And uh, they typically will have a decent bit of hops, typically noble hops in a Pils. So it's not going to be over the top in terms of hop intensity. Uh, but some of them run the gamut. I mean, you can have very, very mild in terms of hop uh, forward nature and bitters and uh, certainly more imposing. Um, a lot of Czech and German Pilsners have a lot more um, kind of hop forward, hop dominant, hop bitters that they get into their Pilsners. But this does smell very nice. And it, it, it's got that classic like fruitiness. It's like kind of honey-like sweetness. And uh, that's very common for a Pils. So, uh, so far, it's looking great. It's got the right head, the right color, the right aroma, the right carbonation. Let's just jump right in and see what this one's about. Mm. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh, that's so good. I love a good Pilsner. It's one of my favorite beer styles. It really is. It's just hard to beat a Pilsner. There's a reason that Pilsners are the most imitated beers on the face of the earth. Um, there's a ton of beers. IPAs are popular. Stouts are popular. But there is no more imitated and reproduced beer style in the world than a Pilsner. And there's a very good reason for that. It's that every time you get that sip, it's just, ah, it's just one of the quintessential refreshing beer styles. There's a lot of other styles that put me in mind of this as well. Classic German Helles, um, Keller beers even. Uh, but, you know, Pilsners are the ones that are popular and, and rightfully so. It's just a delicious beer style. In terms of what this beer presents to me, it's got a little interesting um, character to it. It's not identical to your average pills. Um, it does bear all the hall hallmarks, but there's an extra kind of je ne sais quoi about this beer. It's got this, I, I don't want to call it clovey. That's where my brain went to first, but it's not clove and it's not funky. It's kind of somewhere in between. So it's got all the classic hallmarks of a Pilsner, but just this extra little something special to it that I can't quite put my finger on, but it's very enjoyable. I'm gonna go in for another sip here, start to think about the body and the mouthfeel and uh, how this is balanced and start to explore these flavors. Body, as you might expect, is medium light. It's a Pilsner, it's five and a half percent. It's not IBV. It's not a style that's known for having a big, robust body. It feels perfectly appropriate for the ABV range and for the beer style. Mouthfeel, same thing. It's not hugely viscous, and it shouldn't be. It's a Pilsner. It's very light. It's very crisp, and um, it's got a lot of carbonation. You can feel it. If you agitate it around the palate, it does get a little more creamy, uh, but not overt. It's, it's not crazy. And this beer... Uh, does have a kind of a classic Pilsner finish where it's dry on the back, but it takes a long time to get there. Um, frankly, the length of the finish on each sip of this is quite a bit longer than your average Pilsner. It still finishes with that dryness, that crispness that you come to know and love from a Pilsner, but this one has just a lot more length of intensity of flavor before it gets there. And it's very, very enjoyable. Like I said, there's this something in this beer. I can't put my finger on it. It, it, it's kind of like a cross between clove and funk. That's the best way I can describe it. It's not exactly either, but it's somewhere in the middle. 
is adding this underlying interesting quality to the flavor profile. But I absolutely love it. Um, I'm really enjoying the way this beer tastes and just this class crispness that is the beauty of a Pilsner. I'm going to jump in for one more sip for final thoughts here. Mm. You get that slight sweetness up front. That's where that interesting flavor combination comes in. It's like kind of tart, soury funk without being sour or tart, and then kind of clovey without being overtly clovey, and just this classic Pilsner feel about it. That slight sweetness, that slight honey-like sweetness, and just this nice, clean, crisp malt mill. Now, in terms of Pilsners that are a little more hot forward, this is not a hot forward Pilsner at all. It's, it's very subdued, it's very mild. I'm sure they use classic noble hops and they use them sparingly but they really just made just the bang on Pilsner here. I love them. They're one of my favorite beer styles. They're all a little bit different and unique. There's a lot of variation and this is a darn fine one. I'm gonna take my time sipping on this, count my scores. When we come back, we will get both beers ranked from top to bottom. Okay, now that we've gotten to enjoy both beers, we're going to get them ranked. Starting with the Fremont Brewing Company's Field to Ferment. This is a fresh hop pale ale clocking in at 6% ABV. They are based out of Seattle, Washington. Uh, this is brewed with a blend of Centennial and Simcoe hops. Starting with the aroma. The aroma on this one was absolutely huge. You could smell it from a great distance away, and the closer you got to it, just the more intense that hop aroma came through. You could absolutely smell the Simcoe and the Centennial and you knew it was going to be something special because it smelled just ridiculously fresh. So getting it uh, from the vine into the boil uh, within 48 hours for that fresh hop status really does pay off. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. For the taste, I absolutely loved it. This is a huge, huge pale ale. I cannot overstate how huge of a pale ale this is. This puts many, many, if not the majority of standard IPAs to shame in terms of hop pungency, in terms of lingering hop flavor, and hop bitter presence. It was just massive. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. For the body, this is not a big ABV on a beer. It's a 6%, so that's kind of high mid-range for pale ale. Um, but frankly, the body wasn't as robust as I expected, even for that lower ABV range. It was high end of average. It gets a 6 out of 10. For the mouthfeel, this was very much a classic pale ale. I thought overall it was above average. Uh, but again, it um, at, at 6%, for the style, it felt relatively normal. It was quite effervescent, and uh, really the effervescence, I think, kind of threw off the textbook mouthfeel for a pale ale. It did have a little bit of a wet factor, and it didn't have a lot of viscosity. It's not typically a very viscous um, style in terms of mouthfeel, but this one just felt a little flat and overactive. It was a little hard to pick out the character traits. Overall, though, what I did discern was above average. It gets a seven out of 10. For the finish, uh, this beer was just absolutely killer. The hops and all of their flavor characteristics and the bitters just lingered for days. It was super long. It could put many beers with double the ABV to shame in terms of length and complexity of finish. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. For head and retention, Again, th this was just a home run of a beer. It poured beautifully, formed a nice, thick, lush, creamy head that stayed all the way to the end. It gets a 10 out of 10. Appearance-wise, this is textbook pale ale. If anything, it might have been slightly lighter than average because it did put me in mind uh, off the bat when I first started pouring it. I said, oh, wow, this is looking very akin to a Saison, a farmhouse ale, a Goza, something with an even lighter malt bill. But it was lovely, perfectly in range, nice, beautiful, light pale color gets a 10 out of 10. For the balance, the balance on this beer was superb. I, I think that they nailed it because I could still taste that classic pale ale malt bill, but the hops were front and center. Just as with an IPA, that really, for me, is the story of this beer style. It really is about the hops. If um, you, know, you wanted something that was more grain-centric, certainly Pilsners and other styles, Keller beers, take your pick, but the pale ale really is a style about the hop. Uh, the India Pale Ale came out as a hopped up version of this beer, um, which, you know, made it even more hop intensive. But 
make no mistake, the pale ale is about the hop, and this one did that in spades. Perfect 10 out of 10. Feeling in the intangible, I loved it. I absolutely loved it, and if I'm being perfectly honest, I think this is probably the best pale ale I've ever had. I've had uh, many, many, many hundreds of pale ales over the years, some that I think are absolutely stellar, but this was just next level. This was pale ale nirvana. Gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Finally, as an example of this style. Overall, this beer had the top score in the bulk of its categories. I only docked a few, and they both came from the same category, body and mouthfeel. But again, 6%, it's not that big, and it was so effervescent some of what I would normally be able to discern got lost, just how active it was. But overall, this was such a strong, strong showing for a pale ale, I could not dock any points. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10, which brings the total score on Fremont Brewing's Field to Ferment to a 93 out of 100. This is absolute top tier beer. If you love pale ales, this is one to get your hands on. Whatever you gotta do to do it, I promise you this will be one of the best pale ales you've ever had. Uh, moving on to beer number two. Uh, this is Allagash Brewing's True Penny. It's a Belgian Pilsner, 5.5% ABV. They are based out of Portland, Maine. Um, for the aroma on this one, the aroma was nice. It was uh, certainly above average for a Pilsner. Pilsner is in a super pungent um, beer style in terms of aroma. Typically, some of the German and Czech ones are hopped a little more heavily and they produce a bit more pronounced aroma. But overall, I did think this was above average. It gets a seven out of 10. For the taste, I absolutely loved it. This beer was properly delicious and it was classic Pilsner, though it was much lighter. It was not as heavy or as bold and in your face as say a Czech or German Pilsner. Um, but what it did have going for it was this very peculiar, almost a cross between funk and, funk and clove. It wasn't exactly clove and it wasn't exactly funk, but there was this interesting it factor this beer had that I just thought took it to another level and it paired perfectly with the classic Pilsner malt bill. Gets a perfect 10 out of 10 from me. For the body, this was perfect Pilsner, perfect weight and perfect breadth for the ABV range. It was classic Pils. It gets a 10 out of 10. Malfeel, same story here. It's a beer style that um, the mouthfeel comes in many different facets and often a lot of that comes on the very end with that dryness factor. Uh, this had that, I'll address that more in the finish category, but uh, for the mouthfeel overall, it was spot on and it did have that little dryness and it felt exactly as a Pilsner should. It gets a 10 out of 10. Now moving on to the finish. The finish on this beer was excellent. The flavors really had staying power and they really lingered around the palate. There was a lot of intensity of flavor, even though it wasn't that big and bold and in your face and it wasn't really hop driven, the flavors that it did produce were just fantastic. And you did get that classic Pilsner dryness effect on the back end, which I absolutely loved and appreciated. It gets a 10 out of 10. For the head and retention, this just like the Fremont, it poured a beautiful head at home. Classic Pilsner, nice creamy, lush, thick head, and it stayed to the end. It didn't do as well as some others, but it only missed the mark by a thin, thin margin. I only docked one point, it gets a nine out of 10. For the appearance, this was textbook pills, beautiful light, bright golden color, 10 out of 10. Uh, for the balance, for the balance, I did enjoy the beer and I thought it was very unique in terms of a Pilsner, but for me, um, you know, I may be slightly biased, but I do prefer the more Czech and the German bend the progenitor of the style, um, you know, that's, it's, they use more hops, they just do, in general. Not all, not all, but in general, if you're gonna get a more hoppy pills, it's coming out of the Czech Republic or it's coming out of Germany. Um, this was absolutely delicious, don't get me wrong, but I was craving a little more hop bite. The hops were essentially indiscernible in this. There was really no real sense of bitters. What I did taste was classic, noble, very mild and very light handed use. But overall, I did still love the beer. I did still think it was balanced well above average overall. It gets an eight out of 10. For the feeling in the intangible, kind of laying on what I just described about the balance. That's really my only gripe. There were a couple little nitpick categories, okay, the aroma, etc. But for me, I just would have liked a little more hot presence, a little more bitter twinge to it. And I think the way that it would have paired with that unique flavor it brought to the table would have just taken it to absolutely the next level. It gets a nine out of 10. Finally, as an example of the style, though I did nitpick a few categories, honestly, this beer was fantastic. 
This was a very delicious, a very unique and original Pilsner in terms of flavor and what it brought to the table. And uh, I absolutely loved it. I ducked no points. It gets a perfect 10 out of 10. That brings the total score on Allagash Brewing's True Penny to a 93 out of 100. So yet again, another well above average top tier offering and both with the same score this time, 93 out of 100. These are both superb. If you're a fan of pale ales or a fan of Pilsners like trying more intense and different flavor combinations, these are two well worth your time seeking. I highly recommend both of them. Folks, that's today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to stay in the loop when our videos go live to YouTube, you can just click the notification bell icon. It's right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.